Hi everyone. So this series is all about my hydroponics experiment at home uh, in a very small balcony in a very cheap manner. Uh, this series I try to post a progress update on every Tuesday, uh, depending upon what is going on right now, my failures, my successes, and whatever is there. Maybe that helps you learn learn that. You can check out the entire playlist here somewhere at the top of the screen. And in this uh, episode today, we are gonna actually. Uh, implement a net system with a bucket and uh, so mustard seeds and fenugreek or uh, methi seeds let's dive into it so this is the third series of the hydroponic uh, series that i'm making so the first system we told you that uh, i told you that there was a bucket and there was a pvc sheet and there was holes and all of that another method you can do is is this net pot and a bucket so you just have to immerse it so that the water is a little bit at the bottom and then we are gonna plant both uh, mustard seeds and methi or fenugreek seeds into this and see what happens in this uh, system so let's set it up i will put a layer of perlite hydro uh, perlite and this this one and vermiculite I also have those this is the vermiculite I have so I will be using these and first and foremost I have soaked the seeds overnight for better uh, kind of germination uh, I'll use the topmost layer as a little bit of cocoa peat and the bottom layers will be mostly perlite and vermiculite so I made four lines with this, uh, the lines I made with something like this, this brush, I put four lines and I put the seeds to each, so two of those are mustard seeds and two of those are fenugreek seeds and the soil already feels moist. So one layer was perlite, one layer was vermiculite and one layer is cocoa peat. I'm now going to cover this with a little bit more because what happens is also another thing if any one of you have breathing problems or something like that you should really wear a mask while handling perlite or vermiculite because there's a lot of fine particles that flows in into the what do we call it air and it makes it very difficult for uh, any of us to breathe even for people who don't have uh, any kind of breathing problems so I'm just gonna cover up the seeds with a light layer I think I have overcrowded the seeds to be very honest so I might have to remove a little bit of seedlings if I want more quality control of but this is just for DIY experiments so this from this we will learn a lot of points and maybe at that point you can try it out yeah more or less it's covered so it will slowly soak up the water and stay moist and germinate so I'll keep posting a status after three to five days and show you what's up with this. Day three report on this hydroponics bucket system. So this is the cover I have put to protect it from birds. You can see that I sowed the seeds on Saturday evening and today is Tuesday afternoon. And two rows of methi have come up and two rows of uh, mustard seeds have come up and if you want to see the best part let me show you ow, ow. it's really hard to do it in one okay. do you see the root system the multiple root system just in day three so this is the progress today i'll be posting an update a little bit later as well I'll add the fertilizer, uh, you know, a little uh, a week later 
because uh, as this is growing in water it doesn't need much time to acclimate so I'm I can actually go ahead and add it in 10 days maybe so yeah this is what it is this is day six of the seeds that we have sown uh, on the left side the mustard seeds are doing really really well uh, but on the right hand side the myth Phoenix Creek seeds are completely it looks like death in here so there are a couple of reasons why you can see that all of this what has happened is a uh, fungal attack has happened on this side of the things especially you can see on these sides like weak uh, leggy seedlings this is a sign of fungal attack you see here the thinning of the seedlings from the base that denotes a fungal attack on the seedlings so there are a couple of reasons why this has happened we will explore the same as well uh, one of the first and foremost reason that has happened is methi seeds are very sensitive to high temperature and high humidity so over the past seven days it has been cloudy and high humidity uh, apart from that right now as i'm speaking it's about 33 degrees celsius real temperature and feels like 44 degrees celsius as per the weather report and it's over 69 percent humidity in peak afternoon so of course the humidity increases more as the evening passes and it goes well and above 80 percent sometimes so the first of all i sowed this in the wrong time that's one of the mistakes the second is methi seeds are much more sensitive to fungal infection as you can see it's the same soil media for both these guys and this is doing well but this is not so this guy um, phenogreek seeds are much more uh, sensitive to fungal infection and high temperature and humidity than uh, the mustard seeds uh, so which is why i think the ideal time to sow this would be sometime last week of october i sowed it in september so it's really not cold and the temperature is not dropping at all uh, so i'll try it again on october end whatever happens with this i will use this but the yield would be very very low with this uh, another part is that i used coco peat so one of the recommendations for methi would be when i sow it in october one of my learning is that uh, as it is much more susceptible to fungal infection what i'll do is i will cook the soil part of it uh, so the layer includes a little bit of coco peat and uh, perlite and vermiculite perlite and vermiculite are completely treated only fungal infection source can be the coco peat itself so as it's a damp and all of that so as i prepared the coco peat a little while back so always it's a good idea to actually kind of heat that part of it uh, in kind of a oven or induction i'll link some uh, links for that below you can check those out so that's something that i'm going to follow for methi seeds as they are much more uh, sensitive to this kind of a thing you see very few of them are doing well so uh, i would say this has also gone crazy many for, there's also another issue that i've overcrowded the seeds a bit so i'm gonna avoid doing that the next time as well so yeah this is pretty much the status update on it but the mustard seeds are looking pretty good i'm liking it that's the update on day six hi everyone so in the earlier part of this video we saw that uh, there is this uh, fungal infection with the methi or fenugreek seeds in a kratky hydroponic system so there are a couple of reasons why there are exactly two reasons why number one is i sowed in the seeds much much earlier than it can tolerate so methi seeds and fenugreek seeds don't like that much of humidity when they are being sowed into the soil so uh, what happens is that in this case uh, i sowed it in early september uh, but even now the temperature is above 33 degrees celsius and uh, the real feel is about 44 degrees celsius uh, apart from that the humidity is over 70 percent uh, which means that the chances of fungal infection in fenugreek seeds is much higher than its counterpart mustard seeds 
so uh, what uh, one of the takeaways from this is to reattempt uh, fenugreek greek or methi seeds again at the last week of october uh, instead of doing it right now so uh, another point is that there was a source of fungal infection this is the thing that happens because the topmost layer uh, i used a layer of perlite vermiculite and coco peat on top to uh, help with the germination so uh, in coco peat actually that coco peat was made a little bit little while back so uh, the next time i attempt another change that i'm going to do is actually take in that coco peat if it's made if it's not freshly made and if it if i had left it open or something like that what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly dry it up along with whatever soil i'm using for only seed germination this is only required for seed uh, germination and the way i'm going to dry it up is by using an induction or a hot plate and take a large container and warm up the soil a little bit so any kind of uh, fungal infection or any spores or any bacteria or anything that is there in that soil can be removed and it increases the chances of our seeds not getting infected from uh, with any kind of infection so uh, the weak seedlings that we saw the tiny uh, uh, like it was thinning out uh, was usually happens for two reasons one is light and one is fungal infection in this case light was not a problem at all because i had kept it outside since day one and uh, which is why it was a uh, fungal infection so we are going to use uh, this time that we get one month uh, whatever yield we get from this methi i will be documenting that as well uh, but if that is not much or not nothing at all in that case what i'm going to do is i'm re going to replace that entire area half of the bucket and sow coriander seeds in instead so actually what we can interestingly do is to compare uh, the cultivation of coriander in a soil environment in the same place in the same temperature and in a hydroponic system so that would be an interesting experiment uh, let me know if you want any other uh, plants to be grown hydroponically the next plant that i'm planning to grow hydroponically is cherry tomatoes and uh, you know some larger uh, plants which is one of them is cherry tomatoes and which are very easily grown in hydroponic solution but in that case one plant requires a large setup uh, so that's pretty much the plan so stay tuned for next week's video on uh, progress of uh, both the bucket system and the spin seedlings and apart from that uh, any other hydroponic system in general for watching.